I want you to step across the aisle and greet somebody in the name of Jesus. Cause I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. I will
Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Yeah. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper.
Exalt him. Father God, you're worthy of praise. You're worthy of praise, Father. Father, as we get ready to receive your word this morning, I ask that we would have open ears, open hearts, Father, to receive what the man of God is going to bring us this morning. Father, let it renew us. Let it refresh us. Let it change us. Father, let it challenge us. Father, and if need be, let it bring conviction to us, oh God, so that we would be able to stand before you with an open heart, with clean hands, a clean heart, and that you would receive all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. So today is going to be our third sermon in the series of Training for Reigning, and we've been talking about how about being healed and divine health, and it's time for the supernatural to be in the church. And, and, and we, we have all been a part of churches all of our life that were basically powerless. And, and so when I asked people to raise your hand and, and, and show how many people had a physical illness that needed to be healed... 80% of the people's hands are up. And we wrote those on a card. And we're going we're gonna, to, there's a strategic way that we're going to address this. And we're excited about that. Well, today, what the Lord is doing, if you haven't caught this process, is week upon week, He's building our faith and, and bringing us the wisdom and knowledge on how to stand so that when we get healed, we get to stay healed. Amen. 
And so we started a couple of weeks ago with how to keep your healing. Last week was serving notice on the enemy. And thank you for so many people that came up and said, hey, I'm ready. We're going to do this thing. Has any of your symptoms increased because you did that last week? All right, right? So, so you know the fight is on, right? And so because of that, we're going to win. We're going to win, and the enemy knows that. Today is going to be declaring war on the demon spirits of infirmity. That's what's going to happen today. And I'm excited about that because at the end of the day, we win. Amen? In John 16 and 33, Jesus said, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And because he overcame the world, you and I have the inherited right, authority, and power within us to overcome as well. So today, we're going to make this declaration of war against the spirits of infirmity inside of you. And so, and this is, I want you to begin to think in different terms. A, a declaration is powerful. When you make a declaration, I looked up the word declaration uh, on the internet and it said, the formal announcement of the beginning of a state or condition. Are you with me? So you're going to make a formal announcement to the, to the spirit of infirmity that is inside you that their time is over. And here's what's interesting about that. You and I have been taught for years to have more faith in the demon spirit than in Jesus. Because we'll go and, Lord, heal my back. And then we, and then we make our appointments and we go get our medicine and we do this and we do that. And, and it's just part of the process because, well, you know, the Lord not going to heal me anyway, so I might as well get some medicine. I'm not saying medicine is wrong. I use medicine. I'm in the same boat you are. But the fact is, is there is a divine health that you and I should operate in. And what we've got to do is begin to change our philosophy. We have to begin to change the way that we think about what we're dealing with. The legal right it has to be there or not and begin to move against those things. Because listen, as you begin to minister to other people, you begin to lay hands on the sick and they recover like Mark chapter 16 says. You want to be able to have that testimony. I, I took my blood pressure again last night and it was 121 over 70. That's almost perfect. 121 over 70. No blood pressure medicine in over a month. Amen. God has healed me of high blood pressure. So I'm going to be on the healing wall and so are some of you. I'm already getting stories from other people. So as we learn this and you begin to take hold of this, healings are going to start showing up. We don't have to have a line and pour oil on your head and, and make a big thing. Now, that, that's the book of James where if there's any sick among you, let him call for the elders and that can happen. We can do that. But at the same time, when you start catching this, you can begin to tell these things to let go, get out. This is the temple of the living God, and you're trespassing. Get out. When you pray for your children, pray for them in Jesus' name. Get off my babies. You have authority in you. Amen? So today, as we make declarations against these spirits of infirmity, you need to start building your faith, and there's some steps that you need to take. There's some things that you need to write down. If you didn't bring any things to write notes on, write it on your arm or something. That's cool. You can do it. Just, don't, just write, copy. Or, or I'll email you my notes. How's that? Send me a text. I'll email you the notes. But there's some things that you need to do, some steps you need to make. Number one, you need to have a made-up mind. You have to decide your, your life is about to change. Matthew 9 and 27, when Jesus departed, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Now, Son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said to them, Believe you that I'm able to do this? Do you believe this? You're going to have to have some belief. You have to have some faith in this. You need to believe in Jesus. And they said unto him, Yes, Lord, we believe. Then he touched their eyes after they admitted their belief. And he said, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now you need to take that and you need to remember this verse. You need to write this on something. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it in place on your mirror in the morning when you get ready. Because 
but based on your belief, according to your faith, so be it unto you. Think about how that works in the negative. Oh, man, I'm just fine until, until the evening comes. Man, when the evening comes, my back goes down, and I've got to sit down and get my heating pad and my Bengay and my, my, all that stuff and put it on and take those. Because every night, everything just falls apart. You're, you're automatically giving life to demon spirits to attack you on a greater level. You see what I'm saying? So you're giving faith to the wrong side. Does that make sense? Anybody guilty of that? All those that just lied about it, raise your hand too. Amen. There you go. Praise God. So we have an active part. And, and their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them. See that no man knows it. I know he was the smartest man on the planet and all that. But he just told those, those, those blind guys, don't tell anybody. And the next verse says, but they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all the country. Right? That was hilarious. I love that verse. Matthew 21, 21 says, Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you will not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also you'll say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, and it'll be done. He was saying, look, there is so much more you can do if you'll lock into this. Begin to train yourself to believe. Begin to stop yourself from giving faith to the wrong side of the equation. You're going to have to retrain your flesh. Everybody put your finger in your face and say, we're fixing to have a talk. We're going to have a talk. Right? John 14 and 12 said, Verily I say unto you, this is Jesus speaking, He that believeth on me the works that I do, I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, Jesus said this because he saw in the future when people began to really get it, and I understand we've been in this, this crazy hundreds of years of, of darkness, and, and, and the church has lost the power because of this and that. Listen, it's coming back. The Lord is waking up the bride inside the church. The ecclesia is rising, taking their place, saying, I'm, I'm done. I've had enough of this. We're about to stand for who we are, fight the demon spirits, call them, push them away in Jesus' name, and take our rightful place. Amen? Number two, you are definitely going to need armor. And we forget about this a lot. We forget about this. In Ephesians chapter 6, you know the story, you know the verses. You don't even have to turn there. It, you're going to need your loins girded about with truth. And, and that's been a problem for a long time. We haven't had the truth. We've had a mixed down, compromised version of somebody's idea of the truth. And it has been sold, bought, and lived by most people you know. And the reason I know that is you didn't wake up this morning to the news saying, miracles breaking out on 34th and Miracles breaking out on, you didn't read any of that. Why? Because nobody believes it yet. They're not there. The fruit is rotten. Are you with me? I'm not getting very many amens. Check your neighbor and see if they're awake. They need to be awake for this next part. You need the breastplate of righteousness. The only way you get that is through Jesus. If you don't spend time in his presence, forget the righteous part. Iniquity is going to be your driving factor. You cannot trust your heart. It's desperately wicked, the heart of man. You need righteousness to cover your heart. And it only comes from that relationship with Jesus. You need your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Listen, there are other forms of the gospel that are not the gospel of peace. You know why it's called the gospel of peace? Shalom, because it came from Jesus. The good news really is good news. The good news is that the same power that saves you is the power that heals you. That's some good news. So why are we living somebody else's version of the gospel? And don't go lynch your old pastors because they didn't know either. If they would have known, we wouldn't be broken today, would we? Right? Are you with me? 
Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Excuse me. It also says that, that, that you and I, above all, everybody say above all, we need the shield of faith. The, the shield is the only movable part of that armor that's going to be wielded around at your discretion. You know how you build faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You build faith. The Word of God builds it in you. And you, if you don't have that shield, listen, if there's an enemy coming at me right down the middle of the aisle, do you want a, a shield this big or do you want a shield this big? Right? That ties into the sword of the Spirit. You've got to have the sword, of the sword of the Spirit. That's the Word of God. You either have a sword, a little pocket knife, or you have a sword. Right? I, I was going to show you the difference. I thought Quincy had handcuffed me and dragged me out for dragging my sword downstairs. We need the shield of faith. We need the helmet of salvation. Why? Because your mind is being influenced by oppressing spirits of the enemy. I was telling my wife last night, and, and sometimes Saturday nights are very interesting. Mondays are very interesting. Brad calls them the ASDs. That's the after-service demons, right? It's when, when things really go well, the anointing of God moves, people are blessed, and after the service, the enemy goes, what did you do? That was a man. Nobody, you, you start dealing with all that. Sometimes he shows up on Saturday. The BSDs, before service demons, right? And you have to deal with that too. And so listen, you're going to deal with this. It's your mind. The helmet of salvation is the fact. Salvation, you have to have, that faith is the word pistis. It means that you have the, the, the full belief that Jesus Christ is the anchor of your salvation, period. Salvation, that is the helmet. You have to cover your mind with Christ. Because if you don't, those oppressing spirits are going to convince you, ah, God's not going to heal you. You've been, you've been like this all your life. Oh, listen, I've got their stories in there that will disprove that one. Remember the gate beautiful, John and Peter, remember? Such as I have, give I thee. And, 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 and he didn't just jump up by himself. He reached down, took his hand, and pulled him. That was the next move. And as that happened, because of that display of open faith, sinew and muscle built into his legs faster than it took him to go from the ground to the standing up. No wonder he went about leaping and jumping and, and all those things for the first time in his life. If God can and will heal that, and God's the same yesterday, today, and forever, why can't we see that today? Why can't we live that? If that can happen to him, surely the little thing you're messing with can be healed, right? Right? But it's about the mindset. 1 Corinthians 14 and 4, He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifies himself. You need to speak in tongues. You need to pray in tongues because in that process, you're going to be educated by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you what's missing, the next move, the next verse you need. It's going to, it's going to show you you need to fast. You need this. You need that. Let go of this. Pick this up. That's your instructor. And when you pray in the Spirit, it edifies or educates your flesh. It's critical. Pro prophesying, he that prophesies edifies the church. But speaking in tongues in your prayer closet in your secret place edifies you. Amen. Number three, you need the sword of the Spirit, not just idle words of disbelief. The enemy understands authority and will recognize it. He will respond to your belief level of the words that you speak. Are you with me? Let me say that again. The enemy will respond to your belief level of the words you speak. 
So there's none of this name it, claim it, blab it, grab it stuff. You have to have the real conviction from the real Word of God, from the Spirit of God inside of you, that you feel that boldness rise up and say, not today, Satan. It's over. And you'll speak with authority because Jesus did, and He's inside of you. Right? When the Spirit of God is inside of you, it's not you the demons face. When you catch this, it changes the way you think. It changes your perspective. So you need to train yourself with Scripture. The one I read, Psalms 103 and 3, who forgives all of your iniquities and heals all of your diseases. Everybody say all. Isaiah 53 and 5, by whose stripes you are healed. 1 Peter 2, 24, by whose stripes you were healed. It's done. It's settled. Now it's time to take it and run with it. Deuteronomy 7, 15 in the Old Testament. The Lord will take away from you all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest, upon you, but will lay them upon all them that hate you. <laughs> okay. Game on. Number four, you will need to build your faith. You, you, you may get healed at a certain time. Somebody may pray for you and you receive healing, and two weeks later, your symptoms all came back and you didn't know how to fend them off. You may have gotten healed by a move of God, by the faith in the person that prayed for you, but you have to have your own faith. You have to stay healed. You have to build your guard, stand against it, refuse it to come back. You have to make a stand for you. So you got to build your faith. Choose to adopt the philosophy of the kingdom and not of our current culture filled with doubt and unbelief. That's what, that's what we see today. Well, everybody else is doing it. Nobody else is getting healed. Why should I believe I'm going to? Are you with me? L let me say this. Be the first one to break the four-minute mile. Are you with me? Because that, that was impossible for decades until somebody did it. Then the next year, three more people did it. Why? Because all of a sudden they see it's possible. I can do it if he can do it. Be the leader, not the, not the quivering, uh, fearful follower. Romans 10, 17, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Replace your fear with faith by consuming God's word. We respond to spirits of infirmity based on the level of the word that we carry inside of us. That's exactly what you go from. That's what you pull from. That's why many times when something happens, the first thing you do, instead of saying in Jesus' name, you go, where's my phone? i got to call. Because you know they have more faith than you do. You know they have a prayer life instead of a remote control all the time. Are you with me? Anybody guilty of that? Look at that. Nobody raised their hands. I love this. Now, you're on camera. You know that, right? Just it. Just, not really. It's kind of going over your head. Mark eleven twenty three. 23, Jesus said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be removed and be cast in the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in those things that he says, it shall come to pass, and have whatever you say. Number five. You cannot declare war on a spirit of infirmity that you have chosen to go to bed with. Oh. Oh, my goodness. That kind of thins out the crowd, doesn't it? Man, got three amens and a bunch of O's. <laughs> Listen, if you went on a safari in South Africa and crossed a river to get to the other side to your campsite, and when you got there and you were getting ready for bed, you discovered that you had about 12 leeches on your legs and on your back. Would you leave them there? If you would leave them there, raise your hand. <laughs> you found them attached to your body, sucking the life out of you. John 10 and 10, Jesus said that the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, kind of like those leeches. 
It's time to rise up in faith, reject the presence of the spirits of infirmity, revoke their right to stay, cast them off in the name of Jesus, and walk in divine health. Hell cannot stop the power of the name of Jesus or the blood of Jesus. You're walking around with spiritual leeches on you. Look at your name. I didn't come here to get spanked. James 4 and 7 says, Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will. See, you knew that verse, didn't you? Too many people have more negative faith in sickness than they do the positive faith in Jesus. Number six, we're almost done. Celebrate the power of provision. This is something that we very seldom do because we don't actually have the winds in our life to cultivate it. We need some small winds. You and I need to pick focus on something and focus on that and pray about that until it happens. And when it happens, we need to, we need to set that on our mantle. Celebrate that win and then begin to cultivate and, and worship God for the provision necessary to make that happen. Does that make sense? And, and the enemy knows this. He's going to fight you as much about a, a sinus congestion as he will cancer. He doesn't want you to win anything. You do not have to be the broken bride all of your life. So it's time to celebrate. Zechariah 4 and 6 says, It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Revelations 12 and 11, They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. That word testimony, another root word, means he'll do it again. How many of you in here, you, you, you'll, you'll raise your hand on this one, unless you're lying. How many of you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that, that the Lord healed you very specifically of something very specific. Raise your hand. So you have a testimony. And whatever that is, if God healed that, He'll heal the other thing you're dealing with. Are you with me? And if that for you, what He healed you of, He'll heal me of. Right? So, so, so as we have this healing wall and these things go up and we have pictures and names and dates and, and, and people are going to see this, it's going to be a testimony to anybody that walks by saying, wait, 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 I, I was diagnosed with that. That's a demon spirit. That's not a, I, I'm not taking that. I'm not going to keep that anymore. I'm going to fight this because the Lord healed them. He's no respecter of person. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He still has the same attitude toward demon spirits now as he did then. Yes. Time to get rid of the leeches. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time to get rid of the leeches. Yes. Jesus said in Luke, 9, Luke 10 and 19, behold, and behold means pay attention. Look at this. I give you the power, that, that's you and I, to tread on serpents, scorpions, and over all the power of the enemy. Everybody say, all the power of the enemy. The King of kings and Lord of lords spoke that. He's the one giving us the power and authority to deal with it. And nothing shall by any means hurt you unless you invite it. I just added that last part. 1 John 4, 1 and 2, you need to test the spirits and see if they be of God or not. And, and, and spirits, when you say, you address it. When these things come against you in your mind, begin, begin to say, did Jesus Christ come in the flesh? If you feel that anointing hit you, you know it's the Holy Spirit. If you feel something, you know that's not God talking to you. You ever, anybody, do you do that? You need to do that. Stop listening to the wrong voice. I'm not talking about your spouse. I'm talking to spiritual here. It's a real issue. 
In, in verse 4, 1 John 4 and 4, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And finally, number seven. Worship is connected to physical manifestation of healing. In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. In the name of Jesus, of, of name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And so immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. He took him by the right hand first and lifted him up. He went leaping and stood and walked and entered with him in the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. Praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Your worship will trigger physical manifestation. When you ask the Lord to do something and he said, I will, and you're prayed for and you receive it, stop asking for it. Start praising and worshiping and thanking him for it. Because when you go around and ask him again, that's like saying, Lord, you didn't have enough strength to heal me yesterday. What about today? That's an insult. Are you catching any of this? Check your neighbor, see if they're still awake. We're almost done. Tell them we're almost done. Janice Lewis made this statement, praise and worship are demonstrations of our faith and they also encourage faith within us because they require the spirit, soul, and body to come into alignment with God's word. Through praise and worship, we step into faith. And through our faith, God's healing spirit is able to work within us. Isn't that powerful? In Judges chapter 20, when they were facing the enemy, instruction was given. I want you to lead with Judah. Not, not the archers, not the swordsmen. I want you to lead with worshipers. Because when God is on your side, you celebrate before the victory happens because he always wins. He's not going to lose. So go celebrate before you see the manifestation of the win. Are you with me? Are you catching this? The Bible's full of this. You need to celebrate your deliverance and your healing before it happens. That's giving God the faith and saying, look, I, I, just, I just got lit up by your word, Lord. I just learned and realized that you have, you have given me the same authority to be healed as I am to be saved. So I'm claiming it, and I'm thanking you right now for being whole and being healed in Jesus' name. And begin to worship. Amen? Is there anybody that wants to stand and worship just because of that? Stand up and just begin to worship. Stand up and tell him, thank you for healing me. Stand up and tell him how good he is for giving us that power. For giving us that healing. For giving us that anointing. For giving us the, the power over the enemy. Over all the power of the enemy. In Jesus' name. Amen. Just stay standing up. That way you won't sleep through the last one. The last one is to complete the cycle of healing by taking it to the streets. When Jesus gave the mandate in Matthew, in Mark 16, He said, go and preach to everybody. That means share the good news with them about my love for you. They can be saved. They can be healed at the same time. You don't have to be bound. It's not a badge you wear on your shoulder to suffer for Christ. You're not suffering for Christ. You're suffering because you're stupid. Right? Okay, maybe not stupid. Maybe you're ignorant. Ig we can work with ignorant. Ignorant means you just got to learn. But if you know better and you do it, then you're stupid. That's what it is. So as the Lord changes our ignorance into revelation and we're healed, we need to take it to the streets. And that's exactly what he said to do. He gave them the, the mandate. He told them to do this. As you go preaching, say this, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This was the message he preached. And he said, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils, Freely you have received, so freely give. That means if you're healed, everybody that raised your hand a while ago, raise your hand again. If you have been healed, you have freely received. 
Now you need to freely give. And that power is going to flow through you into someone else. You have spiritual authority over demon spirits if you've been healed. Amen? If you're filled with the Spirit of God, you have spiritual authority. Praise God. Jesus would never give us a mandate if He didn't equip us to fulfill it. Would He? He wouldn't do that. In closing, the heart of Jesus to heal you is in Psalms 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And forget not all His benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities and healeth all of thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Such a powerful thing. In Matthew... Chapter 8, the Bible says, When he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. And behold, there came a leper. This is something the Lord put in my heart this morning. I had to add this to my notes because it really stirred my heart. And, And the Lord brought this story out to tell you. This is like a special, this is a text from Jesus this morning. He said, tell my people this. This is what he said. Matthew chapter 1, when he was come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him like us. And behold, pay attention, look, there was a leper. Now lepers had to live in different cities because they weren't allowed to be around people that didn't have leprosy. If they got within so many feet of a person, they had to yell, unclean, unclean. Don't get close to me. Their families could never touch them again. Their children could never hug them again. Their spouses could never touch them. They were sentenced to a life in these cities with nothing but lepers, in a leper colony. And this leper came and began to worship Jesus. And he said, Lord, if you will, you can make me clean. But he knew the law. He understood. He understood the position Jesus was in. He understood everybody was watching. He had his distance. And in verse 3, Jesus put forth his hand And touched him. Made connection with the leprosy. And he said, I will. Be thou clean. And immediately his leprosy was gone. What the Lord wants you to know about this thing that you've been fighting all of this time, this imbalance, this whatever you want to call it, whatever the doctors call it, whatever the pill bottles are for, whatever those things are in your life that you're dealing with physically, if you're asking Him, if you will, I know you can heal me. I saw all these hands in the congregation this morning. They were raised up. You heal them. And Jesus wants you to know that He will. He wants to reach out and touch you and heal you. And you have freely received and you're going to freely give. Amen. So now all of you that are ready to declare war on your spirit of infirmity, come to the front. We're going to wrap this up. This is not going to be a big, long thing. You won't need a copy of this. It's going to be really, really simple, real clean, so you can remember it and keep quoting it.
Thank you, Jesus. See, the Lord knows you can't give something that you don't possess. He, he, he lived an incredible life that was mind-boggling. How do you live that many years without sin? I mean, I'm trying to go a day at a time without it. Right? And he, he did these 33 and a half years of this perfect example of the will of the Father. And then when it was time, he called 12 disciples. He started with 12. And the Bible said he gave them the power to go out and heal all manner of disease. Then he called the 70. He anointed them. He appointed them to go out. And they came back excited, saying, we, we cast out devils. And he said, don't get all excited about that. Be excited that your name's written in heaven. Then the mandate went further. That was in his ministry. Then when he said, it is finished, and bowed his head, the heavens began to shake. <laughs> Over the balcony of heaven came the Holy Ghost to fill the hearts, to live in us. And that was the power, the dunamis, that he had imparted to those other people. And now the Holy Ghost in us is the power that we need to heal the sick, cleanse the leper, lay our hands on the sick and they recover. That's the mandate. And in Mark 16 and 15, just before he ascended, he released the mandate and said, go, go out into all the world, all the nations. Preach, tell them the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Identify the fact that this is not some weird denominational thing. This is the kingdom of heaven. You're an ambassador representing the courts of heaven, and you have within you silver and gold, have you none? You're, they're, you're, they're not after sending $58 for 58 blessings. This is about what you have in you. And he said, these signs shall follow them that believe. It's going to happen. And so in our lives, when we look in the mirror and we read those verses, we don't see a lot of that because we've never been taught that we can. And so because we're willing to step into this, this is where it starts. When, when our temple is clean and filled with the Spirit of God, we have the faith and the excitement to go out. But as long as the enemy can saddle you up with a leech, sucking the life out of you, sucking the blood out of you, how are you supposed to have the faith to go pray for somebody across the street? See the, see the strategy? So today we're going to serve notice on the leeches. We're going to declare war on the spirits of infirmity. Amen? Are you ready? You ready to do this? All right, we're going to make this real simple and real short. You don't even have to close your eyes. You can keep your eyes wide open. Right? Say, in Jesus' name, you demon spirits that have attacked me for years, I declare war on you today. I command you in Jesus' name, in Jesus name to, leave to leave my body. This is the temple of the Lord, the of the Lord. and you're trespassing. you're trespassing. I plead the blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. Over, my body, over my body from head to toe, head to toe. and his word, says, his word says every knee shall bow, every, shall every bow. tongue confess every tongue. that Jesus Christ is Lord. So obey now and get out and don't come back. Now we're going to worship for the healing. Praise God. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Uh.
Everybody look down. You see all those leeches on the ground? <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We adore you. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for healing us. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus. Now, don't ask for healing again. You worship. You th I don't care if it takes a day, a month. I don't care what happens next. You worship till the physical manifestation shows up. Now, let me give you some carnal advice. Don't nobody get all emotionally excited and go home and flush your med medicine down the deal. We don't have time to do, you know what I'm saying. Let the doctor take you off like he did my wife. Let the doctor unprescribe you because healing will show up under a microscope. And let it happen that way. Get your note from the doctor saying, you have no more whatever it is, and let him sign it and put it on our healing wall. Amen. <laughs> what a day. Praise God. Heavenly Father, we are delighted that you are our God and we are your people. Lord, we are so excited for your power and your passion and your anointing and your blood that has been poured over us. We thank you, Lord, that we all stand here today clean and healthy and divine health. Lord, we will walk in divine health the rest of our days. When our days are finished, we're just going to shut our eyes, go to sleep, and wake up in heaven. We don't have to go with some disease. And Father, we give you glory and honor for the calling on our life to fulfill what you're about to do in this church and in this city in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you. Be dismissed in the beautiful name of Jesus.